are bacteria good or are they bad? Most people, when they think of bacteria, they think of the pathogens that cause uh, so many different human diseases. In fact, this is the reason why we wash our hands and disinfect surfaces to protect ourselves from these pathogens. Yet one of the greatest revolutions, scientifically speaking, in my lifetime in the way that we think about bacteria is recognizing that these microorganisms actually are beneficial to human beings, that many bacteria serve a benefit for human beings. In fact, each human body has approximately 100 trillion bacterial cells associated with it. So how are bacteria beneficial to us? How do we encourage the growth of those beneficial bacteria that are in a symbiotic relationship with us? And what does all of this have to do with the Christian faith? I'm joined today by Dr. Jim Painter to help answer these questions. Uh, Dr. Painter is a PhD in nutrition science. Jim, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I liked your intro too, because I remember you know, when we have this germ theory of disease came out, you know, and it was a great thing, and we did a lot of good with it. And then we went overboard. When my kids were little 20 years ago, we're washing everything, san whoa, Johnny, we sanitized the restaurant and sanitized. And now my grandkids are here. I just drop food on the floor and I feed it to them. Yeah. Well, not really, but, <laughs> you know, you know I, I'm not worried about it anymore because yeah. it's like we're protecting ourselves from those bad things. And then over a 20 year period, I thought, wow, my microbiome is all bugs yeah. and it's good. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, what re what really changed our understanding of the microbiome of humans, you know, and this idea that that many of the bacteria associated with our bodies are actually beneficial to us. You know, there's a lot of things that kind of brought it to light. One of them was, as you look at, uh, many women now have cesarean sections, and then all of a sudden it took years, and then we start later on in life thinking, wait, what's going on? They're they're more likely to have this disease and this disease and this disease, and then we go back to how the microbiome start? Mm -hmm. It starts coming out of the vaginal canal, mm -hmm. and that's not a, a sterile place. You know, it mm -hmm. has its own microbiome of things. Yeah. And so babies are supposed to start their microbiome right there. Yeah. And if you take them out, not through there, um, it just causes them to not have the bacteria they need. Mm -hmm. They gathered the bacteria from the hospital room to start their microbiome mm -hmm. instead of from their mother. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of things like that that started showing us the great importance of the bacteria that are in us. Yeah. And, and so what are some of the benefits that, that our microbiome provides for us? You know, they are multitudinous what they do. And I, I teach a class on mental health and nutrition. And as I started studying for the class a couple of years ago, I was just amazed at these microbiomes inside of our intestine actually make uh, things that we need. They make uh, different proteins and hormones that our intestine absorbs and they go to our brain. You think of serotonin, that's kind of the, the feel-good, happy hormone. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when people are having depression, they put them on serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Well, when I found out that the bacteria make almost all in our intestines of the serotonin, and now it works up here, but we make it down here, I thought, that can't be right, that's just impossible. But it is true, the bacteria in our intestines actually make these things. We absorb them, and they go to our brain, and we use them. That's the most amazing of all the things in the symbiotic relationship that we have with bacteria, that they're creating things that we use. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then, um, so what can we do to kind of encourage the growth of the, the, the right type of microorganisms associated right. with our body? So, you heard it here, eat dirt. <laughs> not really. <laughs> but dirt's not bad. But where we get the food that they need is the food we don't need. And so in the early part of last century, all the way up until about 1975, we were refining things. Why? Because yeah. we want pure white flour. Not that coarse stuff with all the bran in it, and the germ is all oily and it spoils. We can just take out the bran and the germ and, and make this pulp. It'll last forever. Stick it on the shelf and it just stays there. Well, we found out then, we started looking at other animals. And you, if you start feeding an owl, you know, meat without all the stuff, they, they get sick. And then, lo and behold, they found out that same kind of a thing. They eat all that stuff, all the junk gets in there, and they have to regurgitate up all the stuff that they don't use. And they need that for health of their their digestive system. Same with us. You know, we've known that fiber since the 75, Dr. Burkett went to Africa from 
England, and he found out that those people just don't have heart disease and cancer and diverticulitis and inflamed colons. What are they doing? Well, they're actually eating whole foods and eating fiber. And so he came back and wrote this paper, I think it was in The Lancet, and then things just changed. And all of a sudden, we were putting fiber into lots of things. All Brand came out in 75 or 6 with fiber uh, cereal. And I always thought, back then in the 70s, it was just exercising our colon. You know, mm -hmm. it, was just, it was just giving our colon exercise, uh, and that's what was doing it. And that's part of it. But then we found out that the fiber is what these bacteria eat. So you eat the good old American diet that is, you know, just hot dogs and, and white bread and, and not much fiber for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and they don't have anything to grow on. And so really, they use the things to grow. And when they grow, the symbiotic relationship, uh, they break down what we can't, and they end up with these short-chain fatty acids that our colon absorbs, uses them for energy, and come up with a really healthy colon because of the things the bacteria are using. So it's symbiotic. Mm -hmm. We have to eat the right things, though. If, if we're not good to our, our microbiome, they die off. Mm -hmm. So we give them food, and they break it down, and they give us things back that we can use. So... Um... What happens when we, we take antibiotics then? Because aren't are we, I mean, we're not only just, you know, going after the, the pathogens, the pathogens yeah. we're yeah. going after, inadvertently Everything. going after, <laughs> you know, the microbiome, right? Particularly if it's like a broad spectrum antibiotic. Right. Yeah, um, antibiotics are the, are the best of times and the worst of times. <laughs> because I remember, you know, when my kids are little and they get an ear infection, oh, and they're screaming, ah, ah, you can't do anything, give them an antibiotic, Plum. You know, six hours. What, what? How did that do that? It wiped out the right thing. But then it wipes out our microbiome, too, at the same time. It's, it's kind of indiscriminate when it, when it kills. And so I've read so many papers on the benefit of taking probiotics with antibiotics. So you take antibiotic like three times a day sometime, but between times you eat yogurt. And you look at antibiotic-associated diarrhea. So you take uh, uh, antibiotic, and then it kills out everything, and you get diarrhea in about three days. And, and it's, most people usually get it. And so when you would give these children um, a little thing of yogurt, you know, between times that you were giving them antibiotic, they never got diarrhea. Their body was able to keep their microbiome going, even with the insults of an antibiotic. The antibiotic did its job, but we fulfill what our, our microbiome needs by giving it more to work with. And it's, it's just incredible how that has been known for many years now, probably a decade or more, that those studies have been out. And still a lot of people don't tend to do it. So if you take an antibiotic, you need to take a probiotic to help out your microbiome. Yeah. So um, another question then is, uh, is the consumption of probiotics, let's say something like yogurt, uh, helpful in terms of protecting us from pathogens? Because it seems to me, maybe naively, that if you've got a, you know, the appropriate population of, of microorganisms yeah. connected with your body that are providing some kind of benefit, it just prevents pathogens from growing in the first place. It really does. It's a competition down there. You know, you get an upset stomach because they're fighting, you know. You've eaten something you shouldn't, and it's starting to grow, and it's messing up the whole colonization that you had. And so, yes, it really is. There's only so much space and so many resources. And if you can help your beneficial bacteria that live in there, and that are there all the time stuck to the side of the wall, and when pathogens come in, you can keep yourself healthy by just not letting the pathogens grow. Yeah, and so, so uh, disease isn't so much an invasion of a pathogen as it is really an imbalance in the, in the microbiome. Is that a, a right I way think to that's, th I think that's a good way to look at it, yeah. And, you know, we were exporting milk, you know, for babies around the world. Look at these Western women. They just mix it up and feed it to each other, and the kids are doing great. So they did it in all kinds of developing countries, and we became the enemy because we were killing children. Because you take a mother, and they breastfeed the baby, and they get all of these good uh, probiotics out of her breast milk and antibiotic things that are helping to kill pathogens, and babies thrive. And then now they're making formula with dirty water out of a thing. This is where Western women now they do this, and we get and, and children are dying. And so we've gotten a, a bad name, you know, through Nestle and some other companies where they were distributing this stuff. And so it really is. It's, it is a balance. And to help your body keep the right balance is supremely important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then in your mind, what does all of this have to do with the Christian faith? 
right? You know, we're, yeah. we're talking about this incredible, you know, relationship that we have with, with microorganisms. You know, I think about our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you got to be kidding me. The guy that, the God that created the whole thing, the Spirit of God dwells in it. That's what the Bible says. You know, that's a hard to wrap my mind around. And if we're the temple of the Holy Spirit, think of what the temple was, how ornate God designed the temple that mm-hmm. he was going to come down to before he lived inside of us and think that was important to him then to have this place to live. Man, shouldn't we take care of this body if it's really the temple of the Holy Spirit? I look at it that way and it changes what I want to put in my mouth. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever we eat, whatever we drink, uh, do all to the glory of God. But we think, what do I want to eat today? Donuts, ho-hos, <laughs> Twinkies. Okay, you can eat some of those things once in a while, but you need to, to take into consideration, what does God want us to eat to keep this body healthy? And just whole foods with fibers to feed our microbiome yeah. is important. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, for me, too, uh, when I think about this type of symbiotic relationship, it, it, it in a sense, provides a, a response to people who are skeptics who might say, why on earth would God create a world where there are bacteria? Right. right. That are, you know, and of course they're thinking of bacteria as being pathogenic, yeah. but it makes sense, right, that God would create a world with all kinds of different microorganisms if they are indeed involved in these kind of symbiotic relationships. I agree. And, you know, I used to wash everything, sanitize everything. And really, our body is a, we have a microbiome on the outside that actually keeps our skin in good shape. And so if you're always sanitizing it and, and, you know, using alcohol to cover things and wipe them out, uh, it isn't beneficial because it is this relationship that I'm sure Adam and Eve had. They they had uh, these microbiome in there and they had all these good microbes in there. And then when the the world fell, everything, animals fell, the bacteria fell, we fell. And then all of a sudden we start getting problems with that. Yeah. But it wasn't until, you know, Pasteur came up with They're the Enemy, and we flipped to that so strong and then did it for, you know, decades, that we really got off a little bit. So it is beneficial to feed our microbiome. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jim, thanks. That's been interesting and helpful. <laughs> I appreciate that. If you want to learn more about uh, Reasons to Believe, go to our website, www.reasons.org. And uh, Jim Painter has produced a whole host of really helpful and interesting resources. So just go to reasons.org and search for Jim Painter, and you won't be disappointed.